What's up, Browns fans? We have a draft coming up. Not that anybody really noticed due to all of our great offseason moves. No longer is, you know, draft day the Browns Super Bowl. We've got the actual season to look forward to. But, so for this draft day, to make it a little bit more interested, my dad and I decided to do a giveaway. So we're going to be giving away this orange elf Browns hat, okay? Or your option to have the Baker, Baker, touchdown maker, large orange cotton shirt okay in order to participate in the giveaway what you have to do is you have to subscribe to the ch this channel like this video and then leave a comment with who you believe the browns will pick with their first pick whether they trade up or back doesn't matter whoever they pick first you can add up to three different names okay so leave a comment with who you think we're going to draft up to three names and subscribe to the channel and like the video. That's how you get entered into it. So what we're going to do today, and then we're, and, and by the way, it's going to be over. So the draft starts Thursday, April 25th. So we're ending the submissions for comments on the 24th. So end of day 24th, everybody who gets in there is qualified to win, and we'll go from there. Okay, so the purpose of this video today that I thought would be really interesting is to look back on the previous 10 years of Brown's drafts and see if we could find anything really interesting that occurred during those times. You know, who do we pick? Where do we miss? Where did we win? Good, bad, a lot of ugly. But we're going to break it down. Last 10 years of the draft and see what we can look forward to this year. Here we go, Brownies! Here we go! Woo, woo. All right, cue the NFL primetime music and let's go. All right, so let's start off with 2009. We're going back 10 years. Eric Mangini, 5-11 and 11 that year. Um, pretty rough year, but if you actually look at the expected wins and losses here, um, he actually outdid his expectation, which is amazing. Um, so starting off 2009, Alex Mack picked center. We picked a center in Alex Mack with our first pick. That was uh, arguably it was a very weak position for us at the time. And we wanted to shore up that offensive line with having Joe Thomas there as a left tackle. Alex Mack comes in. Um, Alex Mack was was a very um, he was a very adequate center. Um, I, I believe he even made a Pro Bowl. Don't don't quote me on that or not. Um, I think he was a very very good center for us, and then ended up dipping, taking more money and leaving eventually. Second round got some skill players with Brian Rubisky. Uh, Brian Rubisky, who had some uh, political ties with his father in the Browns organization within the NFL. Um, I'm not an Ohio State guy, so I don't have a lot of love for just general Ohio State players um, altogether. But Brian Rubisky was a guy uh, that came from Ohio State. Mohamed Masakwai coming out in the second round as well. So we got two skill positions, two guys in the second round that were actually pretty exciting. Masakwai certainly had a better career. Um, Robisky really didn't do a heck of a lot. Um, not not a whole lot of talent left in that draft. So saying, like, if we got anything out of that draft, definitely Alex Mack was kind of the big win. Um, so 2009, what do we get? We got a center. 2010, Eric Mangini again, 5-11. and 11. This kind of was the beginning of the end for Eric Mangini. He actually had the expectation to win 6-6 six to, six to 10 games, 6-9.9 to .9 games. Ended up going 5-11. and 11. Um, That hurt. How do you go 5-11? and 11? You don't have a lot of talent on the field. You have bad coaching, and uh, you draft kind of bad players. But in this case, we actually got some decent stuff. We got Joe Hayden, who arguably was the best player that we had picked in the last 10 years up till recently. Joe Hayden certainly worked out. Um, historically one of the best defensive backs ever that we've had on the team. Um, and I would say that that was definitely a win. We picked him seventh overall in 2010, had a great career. Unfortunately is with the, uh, the ugly Steelers at this point, but it's the end of his career. And I think he's going to get lit up this year with, uh, going head on against Odell. That should be a lot of fun. 2010, 2011, 2012, Joe Hayden would have been a much better matchup against uh, current day Odell, but 2019, Joe Hayden, we'll see. So TJ Ward also not not too bad with the second round. Montario Hardesty really never got anything going. He came into the league injured. I actually got to meet him at a uh, Brandon Flowers charity event down here in South Florida. Heck of a nice guy, but uh, never really did too much in the league and, and ended up uh, playing majority of the time injured. Colt McCoy, a lot of excitement about that. I was deep into the Colt McCoy camp. I was really excited that we were able to get him in the third round that year where people were saying he could have gone, you know, even uh, well into the first round. He ended up slipping. We picked him up and uh, mismanaged him throughout his entire career and ended up now he's a backup, a pretty decent backup quarterback for the Washington Redskins. 
nothing really else. That was kind of the talent that came out of that draft. Definitely, definitely a win. The 2010 draft wasn't bad, picking up Joe Hayden. 2011, we've got the beginning of Pat Shermer's head coaching career. We ended up going 4-12. and We expected uh, about four or five wins. We ended up getting four, um, placing last in the division. Scrolling down to who we got, we got Uncle Phil with the first round pick. Um, number 21 overall defensive tackle. Phil Taylor honestly was a heck of a guy, somebody that I really liked a lot. And as a player, he's a, he's a guy that was really easy to be a fan of. But unfortunately with Phil, again, a lot of injuries. He had a hard time staying on the field, which was kind of like dispelled. The, uh, that was, the, that was his, the story for Phil's entire career. Jabal Sheard with the second round defensive end. Arguably a much better career than Phil. Um, a lot more production that we got out of him. So I would say out of everybody there, uh, Jabal was probably the better pick. Greg Stonehands Little coming in with uh, in the in round two out of University of North Carolina. Um, Cameron Jordan actually didn't do all that bad. Uh, fourth round pick. Cameron Jordan had some interesting years for the Browns. Um, then you get you go into the fifth round with Buster Screen, also uh, a fairly decent production for who you're getting out of the fifth round. But all in all, this is a pretty bad draft. Um, looking at who we got in the first round. All the way, if I had to say who was the best player, probably Jordan Cameron, the tight end that we picked up in the fourth round, but real bad, real bad draft in 2011. Going into 2012, Pat Shermer again, 5-11, and 11, not good, um, coming in fourth in the AFC North, and this is where it gets real bad, guys. Um, Trent Richardson first overall, pick number three, was supposed to be one of those transitional type, um, you know, a franchise running backs. And uh, was definitely not. He was not a Saquon. Trent Richardson, most recently in the, um, in uh, I believe he's playing for Birmingham in the AAF, and averaging one of the worst yards per attempt average in the league. So yeah, Trent Richardson was pretty bad. When we actually got one over on the Indianapolis Colts for trading him, which was a weird one at the time. I was really kind of skeptical because he actually came off an okay season. He was one of those uh, running backs that we dumped the ball off to a lot in screens and let him run. So I, I thought he was he could have had that upward uh, trajectory in his career. It never really panned out. Brandon Whedon was probably the most frustrating pick that we've had as a Brown, uh, as a Browns fan that I've had in in maybe my entire life. Um, picking how old he was at the time. Don't quote me on this. I think he was like 28, um, which is just a, an ugly, ugly age range to draft a rookie quarterback. They thought they could plug him in and have him be pro-ready because of his age. It did not work out. He spent the rest of his career as a backup quarterback. Big arm. If he would have been a quarterback in the NFL uh, from the very beginning, maybe he could have turned into something better. But when you draft an old quarterback like that, you don't get a lot. Mitchell Schwartz still in the league. Um, he's a guy, uh, he's currently with uh, Kansas City, if I'm correct, and uh, doing okay. So maybe he was the best out of that. Um, John Hughes, a couple interesting years there as well. An, a, another productive guy out of the fourth round. You get, a, you get a guy like Travis Benjamin out of the fourth round who can return kicks, actually turn into a decent um, wide receiver. He, always, he just had some drop issues. Um, big time burner, lots of speed, Travis Benjamin. I liked him a lot when he was in the Browns. He reminded me a lot of one of my favorite Browns of all time, Andre Davis. Um, lots of speed, but Travis just had an issue dropping the ball. Um, now, most recently with the San Diego, no, San Diego, I, I call him San Diego, LA Chargers. Travis Benjamin um, has turned out to have a pretty decent career. Um, other than that, this year, really, it's funny that they have Brad Smelly as a tight end. He was definitely more of a fullback. Um, he's one of those guys. He only spent two years in the league, and I, I, I never think Brad Smelly really got too much of a chance um, coming out of Alabama. He was really, really decent uh, fullback when he got in the games. Other than that, there's pretty much all the talent that we had there. If I had to pick one player that, that did the best, probably Mitchell Schwartz was probably the most successful, followed by a close second, Travis Benjamin. So 2012 draft, pretty bad. I'm not going to give it a grade. It's just like a pr pretty bad grade with, Brent, with Trent Richardson and Brandon Whedon as two first-round picks. That was ugly. 2013, we get the Chudster, uh, Rod Chudzinski. Chudzinski, I should say. 4-12 again, last place in the AFC North. That was pretty ugly. This is probably one of the most frustrating drafts. This is when we may have hit rock bottom with this one, although the Johnny and uh, Gilbert draft was also pretty bad. 
that was definitely the worst. This is just a depressing one. Um, Barkevius Mingo, the linebacker out of LSU, and Leon McFadden were the... I mean, Barkevius was really the only thing that we had anything going on. We picked him uh, sixth overall. We picked a linebacker sixth overall. When you pick somebody like that, you need a... Um, you need like a Brian Arakpo. You need a... Um, you need somebody who's going to just be a game changer for you. You know, you need a Joey Bosa, right? You don't need a Barkevius Mingo. Uh, the name Barkevius was... Everybody's really exciting because the, the dog pound, the bark, the Barkevius... Wow, was he a, a below average player and definitely didn't live up to that six overall pick. Leon McFadden, defensive back, oak, I mean, average. I mean, he probably played up to his potential as a third rounder. Everybody else, maybe Am- uh, Amonte Bryant did okay, had a couple decent. Um, I would say uh, Bryant had a couple decent starts. Um, I wouldn't say he had a, a decent career. Uh, but you're drafting a guy out of the seventh round at East Carolina. Okay, that, that's fine. I mean, it's okay. It's kind of a miracle they made the team and even played. But this was a very, very, very depressing draft as a Browns fan. 2013 was a bad time. If you're a Browns fan, you can say that you were a Browns fan previously to 2013. You definitely earned uh, one of the, one of these stripes uh, is for you. 2014, we get the Mike Pettin years. Yes, the high school coach Mike Pettin that we get. As the only guy we can convince to to uh, to run the team after just firing coach after coach after coach, we finally say, you know what? Let's draft. A, let's get a guy out of high school and let's let him coach the team. And this is where it got bad. This guy's is this is this is uh, at least for the first round, it was rock bottom. Justin Gilbert, um, and, and people like to look back on Johnny. I mean, we drafted Johnny twenty second. Justin Gilbert, we took eighth overall. I w- I believe we traded up to get Justin Gilbert, who was more interested in taking pictures of himself with his shirt off on Instagram than actually playing the game of football that he was paid millions of dollars to do. Um, This Mike, and Mike Pettin was so excited about this guy. He was like, oh, we got the steal of the draft. Justin Gilbert was absolutely terrible. And uh, we ended up getting rid of him. He never really picked it up. I think he went to the Steelers and just also flopped there. Um, Complete, complete, utter, but this is one of the biggest busts if not the biggest bust that the Browns have had in the history of the Browns, was Justin Gilbert. Johnny Manziel, hey, Johnny Manziel won some games. Johnny Manziel was exciting. Johnny, Johnny to this day, is still trying to make a comeback. I wish him well. I don't think, like, you could look at one of the previous videos. I don't think he'll ever be back in the league. Um, my dad has, we have a, a running bet. He believes he will. I don't. Um, so, and I think we could go on and on. We could make a video just about Johnny. The nice thing that we got is actually some later round picks. I'm not saying that the second and third round are really late round picks, but they aren't the first. Um, Joel Batonio and Kirksey are definitely solid players. Still on the Browns, still very productive. Um, the only thing good coming out of the 2014 draft was um, Batonio and Kirksey. Batonio is actually one of my favorite Browns of all time. Uh, just so Brad Paisley, if you're watching, Joel Batonio is a offensive lineman. He's a guard for the Browns. Just to let you know. It's drafted in 2014. All right, Terrence West is another one interesting. I think he's somebody worth noting. Um, we gave up on him pretty early. Went to the te- went to uh, Tennessee, tried to pick up with them, and then went to the Ravens. I think he was out of the league. I don't think he was playing last year, but he was actually somewhat productive for a guy. A third round running back um, was a uh, definitely a productive guy in the NFL. We just gave up on him pretty early. All right, so 2014 draft, real ugly early on. And, uh, you know, there's some gems that we found in there with Kirksey and Batonia in the second and third round. So all in all, 2014, eh. All right, 2015, Mike Pettin is still our coach. Mike Pettin, right out of uh, Pittsburgh area high schools, goes 3-13. and 13. This is really where it all started to... Uh, we, we lost a lot of faith in the Browns organization in the 2015 years. This was a really rough time. I drank a lot during this time. Danny Shelton, um, number one overall. Danny Shelton was pretty... I mean, I like Danny Shelton a lot. I like um, I, I like the attitude he brought to the to the team. I liked uh, how excited he was. I liked um, I liked just a lot of the things about Danny Shelton. Unfortunately, as a def- as a big defensive nose tackle, he just we we wanted him to be like a, a Vince Wilfork type of guy, and unfortunately, never really worked out for us. Ended up shipping him off to New England for a draft pick. And, um, you know, all in all, I think Danny's still in the league. I think Danny's got some talent. He just doesn't have the endurance to be an every-down player. Not that you need a a nose tackle to be an every-down player, but that's a guy that Danny Shelton has now become for the New England Patriots. Won a Super Bowl last year. Congratulations. Cameron Irving. um, 
center, Florida State guy, um, blocked for um, for Jameis Winston at Florida State. A really, really disappointing guy. He's right up there with Justin Gilbert as one of my least favorite Browns drafts of all time. He came in number 19, and what a job. I mean, it was penalties and penalties, and we couldn't find. We are moving him from uh, guard, from one side guard, the other side guard, to center. I mean, we played him everywhere, and he couldn't stick on anywhere. Uh, Cameron Irving was an absolute disaster. Nate Orchard, I like Nate Orchard. Um, you know, he, he made it a couple years, and he was kind of big. He was, he was featured quite a bit in hard knocks last year. He's one of those guys that's really easy to root for. He had a great heart. He just kind of had lead feet and couldn't ever really execute and, and finalize a lot of the tackles that he was expected to make. So he never really made it in the league. I think we're definitely in a much better position right now with the defensive ends that we have. But um, Nate Orchard was was a decent guy coming out of the second round. Um, probably if you had to look back on it, he probably would have been more like a fourth or fifth round pick. But um, but yeah, he, w- he was okay. Duke Johnson in the third round. Duke Johnson was a, l- a bit of a steal in the third round. Um, with the versatility that we got, again, we have underutilized Duke Johnson in a way that really I haven't seen since um, since we had Harrison on the team. I really liked Harrison. I thought he was a great running back. He had a lot of skill. He had some huge games for the Browns. Uh, again, I got to meet him as well. A really nice guy. And um, Duke Johnson, I think he's going to go down in history as one of those Browns is going to do really well after being a Brown. If we, I mean, the rumors are he's going to go to Philadelphia, that kind of thing. Um, who else? We drafted a lot of players this year. Nobody else really worth noting, I would say. Um, a lot of guys didn't really make it. Um, never really, I don't even think they made the team. Um, so yeah, 2015. 2015 was really ugly. Sands, Duke Johnson, um, and, and a little bit of production at Nate Orchard. But 2015 was a rough time. All right, we're into 2016 now. The Hugh Jackson years, starting off with one in 15. The one of, we thought was going to be the lowest of the low. We thought we were hitting rock bottom as as a Browns fan, but no, we were wrong. Uh, Hugh Jackson, one in 15, ugly, ugly team, and uh, even worse draft. So let's scroll down here and see who we got. Um, I actually was just clicking on uh, Emmanuel Ogba because a second ago, because I was I was actually a little bit upset that we let him go. Um, and I wanted to look back on some of his production. But looking at the first round, Corey Coleman, um, one of the worst first-round wide receivers that we've ever picked, maybe may, maybe ever the worst uh, first round. We don't pick a lot of receivers. The last ones in the first round, I should say, um, the last one that I remember really working out as a first round was Derek Anderson. He really worked out better for the Chiefs than he did for the Browns. Um, but Corey Coleman in the first round was awful. He's up there with Justin Gilbert. Um as one of the worst first round, certainly one of the worst first round picks in the last 10 years, Corey Coleman. Manny Ogba, um, definitely a good, a lot of production out of the second round. Big fan. He was the guy who made it to the very end. Um, unfortunately, we shipped him off most recently. He's a Kansas City Chiefs guy. It's, it's like we're doing a lot with the Chiefs these days. Carl Nassib. Uh, Carl Nassib um, out of Penn State. Really exciting guy. Had a good bloodline with some other players in the NFL. Um, get your uh, investment. Uh, <laughs> Advice from Carl, as we all saw in Hard Knocks. Interesting guy. Picked up now with, with Tampa Bay. I ended up getting to see him play this year against us and beat us in Tampa Bay with that 60-yard-plus field goal at the end of the game where you see the uh, the gif, the Baker gif like this. Right, so that was that game. And also the game that Baker got hit in the head and the referee said he was allowed to be. Anyway, let's continue moving on here. Sean Coleman is a tackle. Okay, not bad, but also not good. Probably should have been more like a fifth-round pick as a, as a tackle. Cody Bessler, um, backup quarterback, um, ended up giving up on him. He went to Jacksonville. I'm not sure if he's still with Jacksonville. I've, 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 I've given up following Cody. Um, really nice guy. Had a lot of hope. Um, uh, really, I was hoping that he would have been better, but I think Cody uh, hit his ceiling pretty quickly. Joe Schobert in the fourth round in this one was by far um, the biggest. He was the biggest win, and he's been the biggest win so far, um, Schobert, here. I would say if we could go back and do this again, he would have been drafted a little bit higher. High high football IQ guy. Um, definitely has outplayed his fourth-round draft. Other than that, Ricardo Lewis recently gone from the team. Um, injuries with Ricardo never really picked it up. Kindred not too bad as a safety, um, so uh, he he had some decent decent value. Seth Devolve, 
um, as a tight end. Again, not bad. So we did much better towards the end. And then really another big win with the fifth round pick with Richard Higgins, one of my favorite current Browns. I'm so glad that we we re-signed Richard, um, and I hope we keep him as Cleveland Brown forever. I think he's a really nice compliment for his size, speed, and hands to have in there with Odell, with Jarvis, with Anto with the speed of Antonio Callaway, um, a homegrown guy. I'm a huge uh, Hollywood Higgins fan, huge fan. I try to put him in all my like hype videos, my my big highlight videos. I always try to throw in at least one touchdown with Hollywood because I think he gets overshadowed a lot. So he's the other guy. So looking back in the 2016 draft, really bad with Carl with uh, Corey Coleman, not bad with Ogba, not bad with Carl. Nah, not bad with, with with Sean. Cody didn't really work out, but really what stood out for this year was Schobert, um, Seth Devolve, and the big time, the steal of the whole draft for us that year, the fifth, fifth round pick number 172 is Richard Higgins, Hollywood Higgins. All right, 2017, Hugh Jackson's 0-16 year. This is a really weird year for us, guys. Um, a lot of excitement when it comes to the draft, having the first overall pick, taking Miles Garrett, who from all the measurables was um, maybe the best combine player of all time, setting records left and right for everything. Um, spent his rookie year injured quite a bit, so that kind of hurt Miles um, in, in his rookie campaign, but he, he came back with a strong second year um, and has been good pretty much ever since. I think... Um, and Miles Garrett is the guy that we're going to be building the defense around moving forward. So, very nice pick. Jabril Peppers is going to go down in history as the guy who helped bring Odell Beckham to the Browns. Lots of uh, lots of um, inconsistencies with Jabril. We, we we brought him on to be a defensive back. Everybody will remember him fifth, playing 50 yards back. Um, on defense, even out of camera view at some times. Jabril Peppers playing so far back. It was like he was playing his own prevent defense. Um, also never really did well. We wanted him to be a return guy. He was going to be that that pick for us. And uh, I remember more bad returns, including the Tampa game where he, where he had the punt return. He had a nice punt return, was bringing it back, got it to about the 50-yard the line, and fumbled the ball at the end of the game, which would have led us. Um, we were going in to potentially win that one. So, Jabril, thank you for your time. Um, also, you know what, let, let me say, I would say the Denver the Denver game last year in in Denver was by far Jabril Pepper's best game and helped us in a lot of ways win that interception um, and then that big sack at the end when they, we did the all-out blitz and uh, the big sack. That was great. That was his kind of shining moment on the Browns, and that's one that I'll never forget. I actually had to edit that out of my Infinity War video because I wanted it to be about moving the Browns forward. Not, not. I took out Paraman, I took out Peppers. Um, but Jabril, good and bad, mostly bad, mostly inconsistent. Uh, I wish him well with New York. And I think he's going to be an okay safety for them, so hopefully he does well. And Joku, um, and Joku's done much, much better with Baker Mayfield as a quarterback. Um, he's fitting, he's playing his role really well. Um, I think we've got a lot to look forward to and excitement with David and Joku. I am very happy that he is our tight end. He's one of the most athletic tight ends in the league, and I think he's poised now um, to be a pretty hefty target for Baker. And I think his numbers could go uh, up pretty well. So if you're a fantasy guy, David and Joku might be a guy that you might want to snag. Also, a very durable tight end. Deshaun Kaiser uh, was primarily the quarterback for that 0 16 year. He went up and down. He got benched, and Hugh Jackson really messed with his head a lot. Um, currently a backup for Green Bay. It hasn't really done well there either. I don't see Deshaun being in this league very long. Um, but heck of a nice guy. Just didn't work out and was put into a really bad situation. And he was just a guy. He, he wasn't the guy who was going to get us out of it. Um, Ogunjobi, um, some nice years, doing okay. He was he was all right one. Um, the re I'm trying to think. Zane Gonzalez, uh, Matthew Matthew Days was a guy that was actually he, he actually he more than outplayed his seventh round pick. But looking at this, um, the wins that come out of the 27 draft, by far, Miles Garrett and David Njoku, I think those are the two guys that are um, are going to be up some, some pillar-type players for the Browns, the core of the Browns moving forward. Um, and again, thank you very much, Jabril, for your game against the Broncos last year, and I wish you the best of luck in New York. Thank you for Odell Beckham. 
2018 Browns draft. This is where it started getting good. It's surprising that they're giving. Okay, there we go. Hugh Jackson two and five. Greg Williams five and three. Also, Greg Williams, thank you very much. I wish you the best of luck in New York. Um, this is where we start getting in with Freddie Kitchens as well. So 2018. This is where we start moving forward. This is the beginning of the beginning of the of this new renaissance with the Cleveland Browns. It all starts with their first round, Baker Mayfield and Denzel Ward. Starting off, Denzel Ward came out, fired out out of a cannon, um, was making plays, ripping out fumbles, uh, intercepting the ball. I mean, Denzel Ward was who we wanted um, Justin Gilbert to be, but a billion times more. Um, I was even, I had my, some of my um, expectations, I was trying to, to bring them down a little bit because of what we had um, seen with Justin Gilbert. Denzel Ward is just one hell of a player. Thank you very much for picking him number four. I know we were looking at Bradley Chubb at number four to match him on the side of um, Miles Garrett. I think we could have, we would have won either way, but I think Denzel definitely played a much more important position for our team moving forward. Um, just really hoping that he, he keeps the concussions down. Um, I, a lot of people were saying that his tackling style was one of the reasons why he was having the issue. But, man, I'm really excited about that. award. Baker Mayfield goes without saying, best pick that we've had as a Cleveland Brown organization um, in the last 40 years. Uh, I think Baker Mayfield goes down in history as the franchise-changing player. So yeah, so there's there's really not too much else I need to say about that. Setting the rookie passing touchdown record, not even in a full season, Baker Mayfield. This is the guy who's going to bring us to the promised land, if anybody will. All right, uh, Austin Corbett, we drafted. I guess he drafted him as a center. He's going to be playing some guard for us, matching him on the other side of Joel Batonio. And I think he's he's up for the challenge this year. This is uh, this is going to be a, the Austin Corbett Corbett. Uh, coming out party so hopefully he does really well we need him to step up big time didn't get a lot of playing time last year sat on the sidelines most of the time and, and hopefully got the good thing is he stayed healthy because if he didn't play he doesn't have any mileage on him yet it's almost like we have a rookie again which is pretty cool so um, but Austin's got to step up big time Nick Chubb in the second round um, best second round pick that we've had in the last 30 years um, again, uh, this is a transformational type player. A lot of people were saying, well, we should have taken Saquon number one. The crazy people were saying that. Um, and Nick Chubb, in a lot of statistic, statistical categories, actually outplayed Saquon. I'm very happy with Nick Chubb. And now looking forward to what we're going to see uh, towards the middle of the year when we get Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt going bing, 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 back and forth between the two. Really, really excited. Nick, I love you, man. And thank you for giving us a very, very exciting. Some of those some of those runs that you ripped off starting off with um, uh, in, in Oakland were just, oh, it was just amazing. Antonio Callaway. Um, this is a this is one of those guys we took a chance on. Was a, a little bit of a knucklehead in college, and even got into a little bit of trouble after, even before the season started, during the hard knocks uh, time when he got pulled over um, late at night. As my dad always said, like nothing nothing ever good happens after midnight, getting especially getting pulled over in the car um, when you're a professional athlete. And uh, I can say the nice thing was he he kept it all together. Hopefully he stays on the right path because when it comes to speed. Um, one of the fastest guys we have, uh, if not the fastest guy that we have on the team. Pretty decent hands as well. Um, he doesn't have the size. He's not like a Des Bryant, Julio Jones guy who's just going to muscle you around, w matching with the speed. But um, but definitely one of those speedy guys who's going to he's going to marry in really well. I don't know how you're going to cover Odell, Jarvis, Richard Higgins, and Antonio Callaway, adding a lot of depth. Really exciting to have him on there. Uh, Jannard Avery is another really exciting guy as well. Um, this is a guy, picked him up in the fifth round, definitely outplayed his fifth round draft. Um, some exciting stuff with him as well. Damian Ratley, uh, I don't believe he's on the squad anymore either, and uh, neither is Thomas. So I think we're doing, we did exceptionally well hitting on Baker, Denzel, we'll see you with Corbett, Nick Chubb. Um, Chad Thomas. Chad Thomas, he has another kind of interesting guy. I, I, we'll see if he cares more about playing football than his rap career. Um, we, we shall see. I know he's got some controversy going on right now with Meek, um, but we'll we'll see. I don't know. Um, and big time, Antonio Callaway and uh, and Avery there as a linebacker in the fifth round. So very very good draft. We went from 
Um, all in all, if I could recap the last 10 years, who were the big wins that we got? Um, we got Joe Thomas, big win. Uh, Batonio was a good one. Richard Higgins was a good one. Um, thinking back, and then, I mean, basically the entire 2018 draft was awesome. Recapping really quick, um, nobody really decent. Um, maybe Alice Mack in 2009. 2010, Joe Hayden was the big one. 2011, really ugly. Cameron Jordan was the one who picked. 2012, um, 2012 was ugly as well. I don't know. Mitchell Schwartz and Travis Benjamin. 2013, ugly altogether, nobody good. 2014, Batonio and Christian Kirksey. 2015, um, 2015, who do we, I don't know who I'd give it to. Maybe give it to Duke Johnson there is the only one who's actually been decent. 2016, um, definitely going with Richard Higgins, with Schobert, uh, with Kindred. 2017, Miles Garrett and Joku. Yeah, those are the guys there out of that one. And then 2018, Baker, Denzel, Corbett, Chubb, Callaway, Avery. We'll see with we'll see with Corbett. We'll see with uh, Chad Thomas as well. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, like the channel, subscribe or like this video, subscribe to the channel, get entered in to win one of two items. We're giving away a hat. So you could be an elf. We're giving away a shirt. So you can wear a shirt. And uh, both very orange, by the way. So like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with who you think we're going to draft with our first pick in this 2019 draft. We're going to go all the way up. The draft starts um, April 20. Let me move this over a little bit so you guys can see it. There we go. Thursday, April 25th is when the draft starts. So we're going to end this on the 24th. And yeah, guys, I mean, let's, let's see what we can do. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you agree with some of my takes here as well. And I will see you next time. Go Browns. Here we